Roughly one month ago, I launched a brand new SaaS product that has scaled to a roughly $1,500 a month of recurring revenue. And in this video, I wanna break down pretty much everything about how I built this tool, the cost associated with it, how much money I've made, as well as how we've marketed, grown users, and future plans for growth and product features as well. So without further ado, let's quickly get into it. So first to set up a little bit of context, what exactly did I build? So my partner and I, who Andrew Meng on social media, together we have built an app called Monty. It originally started off as an AI meeting recording tool. It's essentially a phone app that also has a web app companion that allows you to record meetings or any audio that you want using your phone, transcribes the entire meeting recording, summarizes it for you, and it also lets you chat with your meeting transcript as well to talk back and forth to get more insights. And then we also have a web app companion as well. So we are cross-platform across iOS, Android, and web. So that's what the original idea has started off as, but now the tool has actually started to evolve a little bit. And right now we have a certain sense of where we want to take that product and what product direction we want to take it and essentially we wanted to turn from a dedicated audio recording tool to actually a suite of tools to help knowledge workers people in corporate america make their work easier so ai audio recorder is the first step and then we actually added a second feature which allows users to chat with their documents chat with pdf documents auto summarize chat with them get any insight that they want and we also have future ideas for future tools that we want to add that i'm going to touch on later on in this video so that's a quick overview about what we built but now let's get over into some of the more interesting parts of this video such as how much money that we're making, what's our revenue, what's our costs associated with it, the tech stack, the tools that we're using, as well as our marketing plan and future marketing plans and future product plans as well. Let's get into it. All right, so now let's break down how much money that we're making in terms of monthly recurring revenue. So we are currently using Revenue Cat as our payment processing service across all the different services. And Revenue Cat essentially started off as a tool that makes in-app purchases within iOS and Android devices easier, but now they also allow cross-platform subscription management, all that good stuff. So that's what we are using for handling our subscriptions and our transactions. In terms of our monthly recurring revenue, in the very first month, we made $1,555 of monthly recurring revenue. That is crazy. And then if we go over into the total revenue of how much we made in October, we actually made $3,256, $3,256. That was probably the fastest, best SaaS product that I've ever built. The same thing with my co-founder, Andrew. This is our most successful SaaS product that we've built in terms of revenue growth and how quickly it's grown. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, how is revenue 3,200 and then how is a monthly recurring revenue, 1500. Essentially revenue also takes into account stuff like annual, like an annual subscription, where right now I think the monthly is $15 a month and I think the yearly is $100 a year. So then whenever we have someone that purchases an annual subscription, it counts towards our revenue growth, but then it's a much smaller portion of our monthly recurring revenue, just cause you know, $100 a year divided by 12, it's much less than our typical monthly cost, which is like think roughly 15 bucks a month. So $3,200 of revenue, and then we made $1,555 of monthly recurring revenue. So that is how much revenue that we've made. And now let's go over into how exactly we got our users and grew this revenue. The way that we marketed and grew this product is purely through organic social media. That is it. So like I mentioned, my partner, whose name is Andrew Ming, Ming Ming Duck on social media. He is a marketing guy. He's pretty big on social media. You can see that he is currently at 189,000 followers. Pretty crazy. And we actually used his profile as well as this dedicated Monty profile to just make funny skits to advertise the product and get the word out about. It. Now, don't get me wrong, it's definitely a cheat code the fact that my partner has this huge social media following that we can kind of piggyback off of. And a lot of his content really is in that similar corporate America niche where the customer base that we're trying to target with Tool Monty. Essentially, that's what we do. We have grown completely through organic social media. We've done nothing else. That is our entire marketing strategy right now. And moving forward, it's still going to continue to be a huge part of our marketing plan, but we also have some future plans as well. So now let's go over into some of the actual tools that we use to build it and look at the cost associated with this as well. All right, so now let's go over into the cost. So first of all, Assembly AI is roughly $150 a month. Assembly AI is a audio transcription service that we are using. It is the actual API that we're using. And I'm doing an approximate number right now because that's how much it costs in October, but it's purely based on pay per usage, not like a flat rate subscription model. So for the month of October, it costs us 150 bucks a month, which is, you know, pretty steep. But right now we're not too worried about our revenue because our cash flow is looking pretty okay. We're not going going in the red, we're not negative, but definitely in the future, once we want to focus a little bit more on profitability, we definitely want to move off of something like assembly AI and maybe self host a solution instead, since it's going to be way more affordable. So next up is Superbase. That is the backend service provider that we are using. Superbase is an open source Firebase alternative. I love it. I've been using it for a long time. It's been a mainstay of my tech stack. And currently we're paying roughly $30 a month to use Superbase. And then for post hog, you can see it's really expensive. 300 bucks a month. What the hell? Well, let me explain. So first of all, post 
Hug is an open source product analytics tool. It's essentially a software that you can plug into your application that allows you to kind of keep track of how users are actually using your app. Sending events, for example, when they're clicking a button or interacting with their app in a certain way, you want to be able to see, are they using a certain feature? Are they interacting with my app the way that I like expected to? Are they interacting with the app how I expected them to? And it's a really useful tool, but it should not be 300 bucks a month. They're actually incredibly generous and it's actually very affordable typically to do this. But for the month of October, I made a horrible mistake where I accidentally shipped out a bug that caused millions of events, like millions of events to be fired unnecessarily. And because of that, we just racked up this huge, huge bill of 300 bucks a month. But now we have, you know, kind of taking care of it. We've got it under control now. It's not the greatest. It's still higher than I would like because it still seems like we're firing extra events are not necessary. But right now we have a big product push that we're going to through do right now. But eventually as we go focused more into cost cutting, we definitely want to bring this down because 300 bucks a month for this, it's way too pricey for how few users that we have, you know, whereas if we had millions of users, 300 bucks a month is fine, but we're not using and implementing post hog the most efficiently on our end. So this is a mistake on my part and something that I'm trying to fix. Next up, we're using Sentry, which is $29 a month. Sentry is an like error monitoring tool just to know when something's going wrong with your app. Axiom, which is our logging solution, just keep track of logs of what's going on with our app, different requests that are going on, different requests that are being sent, maybe some errors that are popping up, 25 bucks a month. Open AI is only five bucks a month, pretty cheap. Now you might be surprised because AI does seem to be a huge portion of this app and it is, but largely what open AI is only really used for is for when a user wants to chat with their transcript or chat with their document. And right now it's not the most widely used feature. It seems like the vast majority of our users are enjoying just the summaries and that's all they need. And the summary portion of it is handled by assembly AI. And that's why it's so expensive at 150 bucks a month. But open AI is only five bucks a month, but we're hoping in the future that actually will go up because we think that document chatting, the tr meeting transcript chatting feature is pretty useful. And we do expect more and more users to use this as well as other features that we want to build out. And for customer support, we are paying a VA from the Philippines 300 bucks a month to handle our customer support. She has been working with Andrew for a very long time. So it's a very experienced customer support agent that ha we have a long standing relationship with. And then chat Woot, which is a 19 bucks a month. That is our open source intercom provider. Essentially, it is a customer service chat bubble experience. Like, you know, whenever you go on those websites and you see the little tiny bubble in the bottom right hand corner you click it you can chat with someone to get customer support that is what intercom is and chat woot is essentially the same thing and it's just open source because your boy loves open source technologies love that shit so and then lastly is expo expo is the build process that we are using to build our react native applications using expo and then we use expo also to handle all of our builds and i believe each android build is like a dollar each ios build it's around two dollars so we spent 69 dollars a month nice last month in October in our first month in terms of build cost so our total cost was roughly $947 and out of $3,200 we are you know roughly $2,300 $2,200 of profit which is great but we're also not paying ourselves anything so still very low cash flow number and we are going to be working on bumping that number up so that's where we're currently at right now now let's dive into some of our future plans for this product number one is our marketing plans so we're definitely still planning to double down like crazy on the whole organic social media space. It's just a space that both myself and my co-founder, Andrew, that we know the best. He's the big marketing arm. I'm kind of the technical part of it, but we also have a say on product as well as marketing on both ends. And we're still very bullish on getting even more value from the organic social media marketing space. We're looking to hire other influencers to help make content for us. So it's not just Andrew. And we also have other people helping us out. So that's one strategy. And then we're also trying to invest a lot more in SEO starting this month. I feel like SEO is something that I've never really done despite hearing so many good things about it. And actually, knowing the true raw benefits about it. So SEO is something that we're going to try to invest in a lot more this coming month, really trying to take it seriously, because whenever I talk to other founders, they always say, oh, yeah, like SEO, I always wish I'd started earlier. So right now we're going to try to start as early as possible and not forget about it. So that's kind of just our general marketing plan moving forward. Nothing fancy, no paid ads yet, maybe in the future. But for now, not this coming month, at least we're just going to go all in on organic social media as well as SEO. And now in terms of the product development, we're still trying to make a good decision on on what do we want to do? Do we want to build a net new product within Monty or just further flesh out the existing features such as like the AI audio recorder, the AI document chatting feature? Do we want to soup those up, make those even more powerful? Or do we want to add actually like kind of a net new feature so completely separate from the document and AI audio recording into Monty? Right now, I think we don't have a strong candidate in terms of what exactly we want to build as a net new feature within Monty. So we're probably leaning towards just enhancing the existing 
existing feature set of Monty. And we think that that'll be a lot of value that we're able to gain there. We're essentially operating under the thesis of what can we build right now at this moment to help grow the business. And that has just been the question we're asking ourselves every single day whenever we have to make any decision. And if it's not actively helping to grow the business or it's not the most high growth action item that is for the business that we're trying to build, it gets scrapped and we're going to deprioritize it until later. So that's been a really helpful framework for us moving forward uh, in terms of growing our business. Anyways, that is a quick 30 day recap and also some other plans moving forward and maybe not this month, but definitely for like the future is we kind of want to get off of these API services that we're paying a pretty hefty penny for and we would love to self host a lot of these things. First up, we would want to self host our AI transcription service like assembly AI, we want to get off of that self host it in our own virtual private server, maybe eventually self host Superbase as well, since it is open source, we could do that. But I mean, that's that sounds like a pretty big lift. I'm not too sure about it. But something that we're also exploring. But once again, we're really not concerned about cost right now. Our main driver is just growth, growing and making more money is hard. And I think cost cutting and just becoming more efficient is a lot easier. So we're not focusing on that. And we're focusing on growth instead. But anyways, that is a quick 30 day recap of the latest SaaS tool that I built and kind of revealing literally everything about it. I hope you found it useful. Hope you found it helpful. I'm hoping to continue to do this for as long as I possibly can in the future. Fingers crossed that everything keeps going well. So if you want to see more updates, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Help your boy hit 100k subscribers. Really appreciate that. Uh, get the sweet silver play button. And also, I just like talking about these things, posting updates, building in public, building tools for everybody. So make sure to subscribe. And if you want to see more of that content as well. Anyways, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer every single one of them. Other than that, have a great day. Thanks for watching this one. See ya.